Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Mike of Spectre Comics. Today I'm going to show you a couple of quick techniques that I use to set up my comic pages quickly so I can jump right into the drawing process. We're going to set up page 25 of issue 6 of Spectre Comics coming soon, so don't forget to check it out. And I'm going to show you how I set up my layers, what's in the page already, so that once I get started drawing I can just jump right in and, and get the page started right away. It saves time, uh, it's really quick, and by just using this template every time you set up a new page, it's already ready to go. So we're going to jump right on the boards. I'm going to show you the comic page, what's in it, and let's get started. So the first thing you'll notice is just I've got an eight and a quarter by ten and three quarters inch uh, page set up. That is the template I'm given from my printer, Kablam. And you can see from this template, which is just an underlay I use to set the page up, I keep this in there just in case anything gets screwed up. Didn't mean to zoom there. And you'll notice right here the page template the page size I have and they have different size pages and different templates you can download but eight and a three eight and a quarter by ten and three quarters is the page size uh, you'll notice the colored boundaries one is the trim line that's where they trim the comic so you don't anything you want on the page make sure it doesn't go past that line and you can either have a margin for a border for your comic page or you can bleed to the edge it's up to you note that it it, it does vary where it might get cut so be aware of anything you want should not be in the yellow or the red areas. So again, the, the live area is shown here. The seven and a half by 10 inch area is the live area. That's where you want all your stuff to happen. So turning off the template, I've got a border page, a border layer set up. Now this just looks like an ordinary border, but this is actually a layer uh, with a stroke attached to it. So it's a white layer with a black stroke, and that is the comic border, and that mimics the template layer below on the live area. If you'll notice, if I just trim away at it, it, it adjusts the border because the stroke applies to wherever I trim. If I'm doing something like creating border panel borders, I can use the marquee tool and just delete and it creates the panels automatically just by erasing the area. Same thing, I can fill it back in with a, you know white and it fills the area back in. So we'll just undo all of that. Get back to the standard border. And then there's a couple of other layers that are, there's a couple of other layers that are in my page that help me be ready to go really quickly. My comic is set in outer space. There's a lot of space travel. So for me, it's always good to just have a star field in the background that I can use and cut and paste as I, as I need. So I keep, a star field available to me. I can cover it up or trim it as needed. But having that layer set up, I don't have to go find stars if I need them, they're right there. So any kind of background that you use over and over again, you can just set up a layer, keep it on there and use it as needed. Another thing you'll notice is I also do my comics in black and white, but I do have some gray tones in it. I use three shades of gray, a light, a medium, and a dark. You can see them populate in the upper corner. The reason I keep these on here is so that I have consistent gray tones from page to page, because once you select that gray, you may never find that color again unless you use the eyedrop. But to keep it easy, and to use it on multiple pages, I just keep these three grays on the page and then I just hide them when they're not in use and then I can just use the eyedrop tool to select the gray I want and fill it in as needed. I usually use it as gray tones or shadows or stuff like that or sometimes I highlight different things with the grays it's just so that they pop out of the page from all the black and white line work. So always keep those gray tones on the page. Now again, this may not apply to you. You may do color comics, but you can create uh, a temp, you can create basically a palette of colors on the, the edge of your page and then just select the color you need. If you have colors you use over and over again, if you have characters that are specific colors, you can set that up and then easily use it over and over again and then just hide it when you don't need it. Just turn the layer off. Um, another thing that I keep, I also have a lot of digital screens because there's a lot of interfaces with monitors, people talking, kind of doing FaceTime across space. I use a static for my page. So I created a static layer. The, the way, and just as a tip, the way I created this layer is I just selected a gray and then I highlighted it and I used a filter. I used sketch 
and then you use Conte Cran and that will give you a static and you can adjust the variables to get a different level of static and a different mixture of grays or whatever color. It'll, it'll actually create a static on whatever grays you're using. So that's just a little fun tip for digital screens. Um, another thing I keep is a subtitle and my Spectre logo. This is typically on chapters when I have a new chapter or a new comic, like the first page of a comic usually has the Spectre logo across the top and then either the chapter or the title on the top and to keep the fonts in the in the logo consistent. I just keep that embedded on the sheet template. And then I keep a sample text. This is the font I use. This is Digital Strip from Blambot. It's a free font you can download for your independent comics and use it freely unless you get uh, unless you get published by a big publisher. This font is available for download free from Blambot.com. It's a very good site. You can also have custom uh, fonts made there. So again, I keep a sample of this. I usually keep my fonts at about nine, uh, nine pixels, and that's the height, and that's usually consistent. Every once in a while, if I'm expressing you know, loud noises or whatever, I'll use a different font or a different size text. Just depends on the situation I'm in. Here's a condition where I use a different size font. So this is a, was a dripping sound. Um, and it's just a font with a stroke attached to it so uh, and I think it's in italics as well so again just keeping certain things you're going to use over and over again um, is helpful you know to, because then it's it's right there on your page another thing I keep is my word balloon uh, template so anytime I want to create a word balloon and I did I did a video on how to create easy word balloons I'll link that in the description below but the way I do that is let's say I have a character talking and I need to create a word balloon, I'll just create an oval. Now again, this layer is set up. It's got a stroke attached to it, a three pixel black stroke. And all I have to do, this layer is already set up, consistency again. If I want a character to talk, I'll just create a word balloon with the marquee using the ellipse marquee and using the polygonal marquee by adding to it. And then I just fill it in with the paint bucket and there's an easy word balloon right there. It takes five seconds and then I could just fill it in with with the text, whatever text I want to use. Let's say I already have the text, but I want to add the word balloon to it. I'll just create a word balloon like that, fill it in, and boom, easy word balloons. So you get you can easily get text and stuff. And the nice thing I like about using this method is I can draw the whole drawing and not have to worry about creating where the word balloons are going to and then I have to erase the drawing. It's just a layer on top. So I can complete the drawing completely underneath and then delete. I don't have to delete anything, you know, if the character's arm or if something's in the background. I can draw everything and have a and that's also helpful if I want to move the balloon around. Let's say I put the balloon here but it's in the wrong spot. I got to move it over. Now I don't have missing lines where I moved the balloon. So that's a, just a quick tip. Again, I'll link to the video where I did word balloons in the description below. So check that out if you are interested in that. And that is what is in my template for quick. Now let's do, let's bring a sheet in. This is a pencil sketch. The scan is a very light, <clears throat> but I basically do my pencils on a template sheet. I basically print out a sheet with this border on it. This border matches the exact border that's in the template as far as proportions, all I have to do is scan my drawing in, my pencil drawing, and then I just copy it in to the template sheet. I usually copy it towards the bottom, right above the border original uh, layer, paste it in, and now I can just give it a little bit of opacity so I can see where the borders are and line them up. So I just take it line it up if it comes in a little bigger looks pretty close and now I'll just rename that layer sketch simple right and then you know if I need to see it and then now looking at this page now we're gonna do an example so I mentioned earlier if I'm on my border page I usually do a copy of this in case I mess up So I turn off the, the copy layer, but I'll go back to the original border. And now 
on that layer, I can just use the rectangular marquee. I see where my borders are that I hand drew in my drawing, my pencil sketch, and I just delete as needed. And now I've got easy borders. And if I turn the sketch layer off, you can actually see that it's creating the panels right there. And it's just really simple to go and create a quick border page. This saves a lot of time. This is a really good method and saves a lot of time with your drawing. Within a, a minute or two, my whole page is set up. The panels are set up. Now I use traditional uh, rectilinear panels. Sometimes I'll do an angle. If I do an angle, I use the uh, polygonal marquee and I just, you know, I'll do something like this create an angle and you can even do weird shapes if you want you know whatever shape you want you can come up with for panel uh, configurations on your page but it's really easy to get my panel set up really quickly now I can go right into my drawing I've mentioned before that I put all my characters and everything's on a different layer so I can work on things separately without having to worry about erasing something you know, I've got all the characters here. I'll usually go in, I'll create a layer for, uh, for each character, do a quick sketch, and just start filling in the drawings. And that is basically how I get started. Um, really simple method. Uh, it, again, just to summarize, have a template page set up for a new comic page, and then it's all set up ready to go for you when you get, when you get there. All the layers you need, have the settings you need, set up right into the template, and it makes your drawing really easy. Hope you found this video helpful. Uh, go ahead and like the video if you thought it was helpful. Let me know if you have any tips or if you have any questions on anything I've mentioned here in the video. Um, that's it. Have a good day. Uh, you don't usually post in the middle of the week, but I'm just giving it a try to see if that changes up my, uh, my viewings. Again, we're trying to build an audience here on Spectre Comics, and we hope you come along for the ride for comic tips and fun art videos. So. Let me know what you think, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.